Hi there, welcome to Lawful Rebel TV and today I'm joined by Mark Mager once again and we're going to look into the issue of uh, the health threat of electromagnetic fields and specifically uh, from cell phones, Wi-Fi and the like and we're going to try and present um, a comprehensive or as comprehensive as we can get package of of what we can do about it the various things that we can actually do in light of this uh, information and in light of the way that, that our health is threatened by these non-thermal effects so there's all sorts of um, negative uh, health effects that we are availing ourselves to with EMF, such as accelerated aging due to free radical damage, uh, reduced fertility is a massive one, autism at the uh, early end of life, um, atrial fibrillation and cardiac arrest, for example, anxiety and sleeping disorders, and increased immune system loading, which contributes to chronic disease. So there's a, these things, we're going to look at how we can avoid them with these various um, measures. So a very quick reminder of what are EMFs. They are electromagnetic fields and um, there's an electric fields with their associated magnetic fields, uh, the radio frequencies and something called dirty electricity um, which we touched on in a previous video which we'll show a link to. So we've come up with some guidance based on four basic principles. First one is avoidance to simply get out of the way of the em emitting device. Um, remediation devices um, such as uh, a Faraday bag to put your mobile phone in. Um, remediation techniques, that's things that you can actually uh, do to again to protect yourself. And uh, lastly, the overall lifestyle choices. So everything we say is going to fall basically into those for categories. Um, Mark, thank you so much, I should have said a while ago, for uh, joining us today on the show. And um, do you want to kick off with um, telling us a few things we can do um, with regards to our mobile phones? We might as well start from the top and deal with that most popular of modern smart devices. Reducing the use of cell phones and maybe not having them constantly on would be the first step and um, just making wiser or more informed decisions as to when to turn them on and when to turn them off. I don't see any need why they should be constantly on. Everyone has a voicemail. Everyone has short message service and stuff like that. So if you really miss a call, then you can get it later. I mean, it was not a problem in the olden days when we had answering machines everyone laughed them because they were the, the latest toys back then and the, at, the, at that time and today it must be constantly on and i don't see why so just reducing it a little bit um, would be a good idea maybe and um, by turning them off for a few hours or when you're not having cellular service anyway riding the underground for example or something like that um, would be the first step and not leaving them turned on like that. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, there's airplane mode that we can make use of. I, I have a, um, a mobile phone, which I use, but it does spend almost all, its entire day in airplane mode. And I tend to use it for the various other functions, such as video camera. Absolutely. One switch, you just throw one switch in airplane mode and you are mostly um, on the safe side. You are not always on the safe side. You have to make sure that... <clears throat> Wi-Fi is probably also going off because it is sometimes disconnected from the airplane mode, which means um, basically the wireless cellular communications. And sometimes you have also to make sure that the Wi-Fi um, function is also off. But yeah. OK, just throw these switches and you're fine. Absolutely. So so it is possible just to turn airplane mode off selectively a couple of times a day um, and then c and collect text messages. A texting is very useful because you send the message and you can collect it because yeah, at whatever time interval you turn your phone on and check. So this is, this is uh, just something we can build into our lifestyles. Texting more, calling less, of course. Um, then there are the obvious ones with, with phones is to not holding it against your head and not storing it in your pocket near your genitals um, or, or indeed in, in, in bras and things. Um, so it, it, unless, of course, it's turn, turned off into air, airplane mode, um, then it's, it's much better. It's still better to sort of leave it in your handbag or park it somewhere. So, so yeah, those, that's, it, you can even go as far as holding a, a mobile phone in a selfie stick. Um, Dr. McCola demonstrated that, that if you held it at, a, at about a meter away from you, you, you've mitigated against the worst effects of it um, while, while in that um, 
actual operating mode. <laughs> yes, it's all possible. I mean, it, it looked a bit, a, bit, a bit cumbersome to me. I would rather put it on the table in front of me or something like that, and then I'm not even me too. By the stick. Um, that's, that's even better, maybe. Um, but anyway, there are solutions, and a selfie stick is something everybody has as well these days, so why not use them for this? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And then, um, of course, switch it off uh, when you go to bed at night. I mean, some people um, still leave their mobile phones on by their bedside all night because they need to be connected. I don't know why, but uh, really a very, very good first step. Sleep. Yeah. If you do nothing while you're asleep, you don't want to be disturbed anyway, in theory. So why would you not uh, just turn the phone off or at least very least put it in airplane mode? Another thing is using mobile phones in cars, of course. Um, be careful using a, f a, f a mobile phone inside a vehicle. It's an electro it's a metal shell and it acts to some extent uh, as a Faraday cage where um, signals bounce around inside the, 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 uh, the, the, inside the structure. So it's, it's a good idea to, to avoid uh, operating Absolutely. phones in the car. And the phones, they are so intelligently made these days, they just power up in order to still maintain the connection and then you are exposed to even more uh, because that's the way it, it has to be designed in order to function. So it's so, going to crank it. Does that um, mean it's going to crank its power up in the car in order to make sure that the bounce around signal can actually get out? I suppose that's how it's working. Isn't it? Yes, the phone, the phone basically powers up to its maximum um, transmission, which is one watt or maybe two watts in some cases, but the newer ones are one watt. Um, I think um, GSM is two watts, but the um, 1800 and 1900 networks they have one watt as a maximum um anyway so um this maximum is reached when you're in the car because the phone tries to do what's technically the the right thing but it's not healthy for you so uh, this is interesting also with regards to airplane mode and connectivity you know you can selectively turn on and off your wi-fi your network connection and your bluetooth um, generally i can on on my phone on the iphone and um, various others it's similar so sometimes for example if you know that you're on just using bluetooth turn the others off or, or turn off what, whichever one you're not using i mean that again that's a small step towards reducing your your exposure it is easy and it's just one step as you said it's it's just one switch and you just have to know them you have to know where they are they are usually very easily to find in, in settings so um it's just something you get you have to get used to and, mm. and then you can do it and if you want health if if you don't want accelerated aging on steroids <laughs> then this is what you have to do because of course you don't have to do anything but you know conditional cause and effect reality if you want to avoid these negative effects of accelerated aging which i would assume everyone wants to avoid it's a question of weighing up you know the values and 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 you know choosing our use of these devices appropriately just in case we didn't mention it of course sp using the phone on speaker is is uh, almost all the time is absolutely uh, the way to go unless you really do need privacy um so speaker phone very handy you can just put the phone down there and and, st and not even touch it and and have a very good conversation with someone the microphones are very very good um it's not really a limitation yes that's true and and speaker means uh, the real speaker um and and not uh, earphones because earphones have other problems again they they connect to the phone and and make all these um wireless uh, signals and the microwave radiation travel into your ear and directly into your head which you don't want either. what about those air tube versions mark do you know about those because because there's uh, yes. there was, are, are they the same on, or they, or they, they better, aren't they? Fundamentally better because they, I think they're just using a tube of air. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. That's a very simple workaround. Um, they just have the earpieces and they put a little piece of plastic tube over it, and then they um, just put the tube end into the ear and and the uh, wired connection and the earpieces. They end like twenty cent centimeters or maybe a foot from your head away. And um, that is pretty good already because um, the radiation stops there and then you only have the little air tubes um, transmitting uh, the, the audio you want. Fantastic. So that, that's essentially a, a snapshot of mobile phones. It's an overall lifestyle choice, of course, you know, sort of putting the mobile phone, the immensely useful smartphone back in its box, as it were. You know, it's a brilliant piece of kit, but we have to be intelligently aware 
of its negative side too. At the moment, at its current level of technology with these pulse microwaves, um, you know, the frequencies that they're at, it's just been shown that the non-thermal effects are going to damage our health. So it's just a question of what's more important to us. If we're if we're intelligent, if we want to become more conscious, if we want to be more aware, if we want to be smart streetwise, you know, then we have to be more knowledgeable and, uh, and making intelligent choices about our uses of these wonderful smartphones is part of that. So, was there anything else do you want us to add to that, Mark? Smartphones, or should we move on to Wi-Fi? Maybe Wi-Fi as the next um, culprit here. Yes. <laughs> of course, Wi-Fi is absolutely ubiquitous, isn't it? I mean, where where are you outside of Wi-Fi? But uh, the the main place that we've got control of it is in the home. Um, so this is something that we can all all consider. It's uh, it's. Um, Changing if you have a, a Wi-Fi router in your home, perhaps changing to a wired system uh, using uh, Ethernet cables. This is not a backward step, ladies and gentlemen. It's a step forward because it's it's protecting your health, your fertility, and the capacity for you to even have children and grandchildren. So it's a really big deal. Um, what else do we need to know about Wi-Fi, Mark? Just as you said, um, hardwiring everything, and it's not just the health aspects. It's also better privacy, it is also um, data protection, it is data security, it is your whole network integrity. Every professional network installation is always a wired one, um, at least where it matters. So if there's business critical content, then it has to be protected. It has to be protected by wired networks, uh, no matter how safe everyone says them, the encryptions of the wireless ones are. They are not, they are the easiest ones to break. I mean, there are better ones around these days, but still, from the data protection standpoint, it's also interesting and it's also useful to use hardwired connections. But to come back to our um, topic here of the EMF um, radiation, um, it is just the better way. It is also the faster way, by the way, if you want some other benefits um, on top of just not being exposed to the unhealthy effects, you also get faster connections, faster downloads, maybe a movie with less flickering or with less freezing and, and whatever you have. So I wouldn't know why I should use uh, wireless um, unless I have to and maybe there's there's no wired connection around. I've come from this point where I used to walk around around uh, you know my living space with my laptop and you know doubt streaming something. It is convenient, but as soon as I've become nice aware, if you don't have cables to, to pull over <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. But absolutely, and it comes down to an intelligent lifestyle choice. So of course, uh, at the very least, I reckon people should be aware that they can switch off their Wi-Fi at night. This is, I think, is a or, or, or you know part of the day, should we say. Um, around their own design. This is this is a, a powerful first step. I mean, changing to wired is, is, is better still, but um, sw switching it off selectively or switching it on selectively, I should say, is, is really important. Why not do it also during meals, for example? That's another hour or maybe half an hour, um, depending on what kind of meal it is, but maybe half an hour that is um, some some time where it's turned off and you can relax and recuperate a lot of new goods are wi-fi enabled Print, printers white goods computers are, uh, tend to default to having an operating uh, wi-fi or smart um facility so it's very worthwhile with any new gadgets that you buy with any new equipment that you buy um a using your consumer choice to try and buy ones that don't have a prefix of smart um because that means um wireless which means pulse microwave radiation which means accelerated aging for anybody nearby so so a lot of these things can be turned off sometimes it's a bit difficult um, i had to jump through some hoops to get my printer off um in fact i find that i just have to leave it unplugged now <laughs> so um so that's worth bearing in mind yes absolutely and you probably have to make sure you just know how the thing is working that you bought and um you just need to get familiar with everything that's that's in it and that's usually these days this so-called smart technology and then you have to know how to turn it off it's easy as that but you probably have to refer to the manual and to just uh, read this f word manual as the saying goes and uh, then you are fine and you know what you can do totally so the last thing i suppose with wi-fi is to also remember that games consoles xboxes um and all these sorts of things um you know make sure they're switched off or their wi-fi is disabled um or even pull pull the plug out of the wall if you need to when they're not in use better still go and find something else to do outside <laughs> maybe better, yeah. 
yes. So let's move into another category then where, where people need to be aware, and that is the use of Bluetooth technology. There are so many devices coming in now, and one that springs to mind to me, Mark, is the is the sort of modern ghetto blaster, where you know you just turn up a party with this fantastic speaker, you know, modern technology, excellent sound systems. It's Bluetooth, and you just hook your mobile phone up to it. Bingo! I mean, what a great idea in theory. Unfortunately, the Bluetooth is the is the bad part of the idea, and the fact that it's unwired, although it's immensely convenient, is is the damage done to our health. Yes, it is convenient, and uh, during a party, it might not even be so bad because, I mean, how long does a party last? It's maybe, okay, if if you're really young, then it's maybe eight hours, but <laughs> usually it's more like two or three hours, and, and then you're exposed to Bluetooth during that time. Still not good, but um, if it's only that source of Bluetooth, then you would be pretty good um, off but on the other hand, it's it's um, the the constant exposure again, and the Bluetooth um, devices they are everywhere. And um, if if you got speakers in your home stereo system, for example, then you're all the time. So Bluetooth headphones are a no no. You know, I've seen some people working and uh, you know enjoying enjoying their day, whistling away with a Bluetooth um, headphone, perhaps for noisy equipment and stuff. Not a good idea, guys. You're much better off, uh, you know, with wired headphones with playing from your mobile phone in your pocket. It's just uh, much, much safer. The manufacturers, they, they are increasingly pushing in this direction. I mean, um, there have been iPhones, I believe, uh, by Apple, which don't even have the conventional plug anymore. And, and they want to replace everything by Bluetooth because they can control the digital restrictions management better and more easily because you cannot tap into the signal and and um, make pirate copies and, and stuff like that. So even for the manufacturers, it's it's a good idea or it seems to be a good idea to have it. On the other hand, they have turned back and they are now reintroducing the conventional plugs. So obviously there are people out there in the market who tell them they want the other solution and they want to stay with the conventional one, which is the standard hardwired um, earphone which of course for all the reasons we mentioned um, I would do too. Yeah. I think it's really important that people remember that we have consumer power and if, if we if we again want to, to claim to be more conscious than than than, uh, than otherwise you know we, we need to know about these things and, and it, it, it's just irrational to to act against something that we know to be harmful so it's just worth um, people sort of bearing in mind and and with things like Bluetooth uh, again, maybe using in the car, it, it is, it, you know, it's obviously safer in terms of using your phone in the car on Bluetooth. But um, again, that Far Faraday cage effect um, making the, 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 the harmful effects worse. So, so yeah, Bluetooth is, is one where we really have to work, weigh up our values in what, what really is important, convenience over health it comes down to. And if you're using it in the car, at least it should have a proper installation with an outside antenna or something that goes through the wall of the car, whatever it is, there are uh, different uh, methods available to, to just go through the, through the sh uh, shell or through the window or whatever it is. Um, sometimes the antennas are built in the window. It's, it's all better than just having a handset, which is not for um, fixed installation in a car, a real handset and, and hold it to your head all the time. Um, apart from the fact that it's a apart from the fact that it is illegal in most countries anyway to drive and be on the phone. Next one I've got on my list here is microwave ovens. So if anybody's still got a, a microwave oven, um, it, get rid of it, I think, really, or use it as a Faraday cage in case there's some kind of uh, cosmic yeah. event that wipes your hard disks. You can use you can use the containing benefits of the microwave oven, which which contains the microwaves. Um, you can use that to your advantage as a protection means as storage. But I think other than that, I don't cook in them and certainly don't do any uh, any microwaving without leaving the building or <laughs> getting about 100 feet away. Maybe not even eat it afterwards because um, I, I wouldn't like eating it either. <laughs> no, no, irritating your food until it uh, heats up and therefore cooks, I, I'm not sure is the best way to do it. But I think the greater danger is probably from, you know, the, the window at the front of these devices where you can look in and watch your, your baked potatoes going around. That's a disaster because that, 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 that's a weak point in the protective shielding around it and, and a lot of the radiation comes out. Uh, of the front. At least it's a weak point when it's damaged and it's probably the part that gets most easily damaged. Um, when it's intact, I believe it's it's um, 
designed properly and um, the wavelengths used should be around a millimeter or something and, and the holes are not much larger than a millimeter. So it, it might work. I, I'm not sure. It might shield some, at least some of the radiation. I mean, um, even if it works, you cannot shield all of it. And that's probably the point we're making here. Um, and not using one is, is even better. And by the way, most microwave ovens in, in most every household are damaged in, in one way or the other, or they are not properly grounded, and then it doesn't matter anyway if it's shielded or not. Next up is decked phones. Um, remind me what the DECT um, acronym stands for, Mark? Uh, digitally Enhanced Cordless Telephone. And they call it an enhancement, as you heard, but um, maybe maybe it is enhancing in as far as um, range and maybe cracks and noises um, go but on the other hand the digital enhancement also means that it's always on even if it's hung up even if it's in the cradle even if it's charging these things they're always on except for very very few models that have been designed differently and um, again you would have to read very deeply into the manuals in order to find out which ones they are or into the specifications before buying them the analogy has been made, if you will, that it's like having your own mobile phone mast in the house. I mean, it's it's uh, it's obviously it's much lower power, but uh, you know we tend to live further away from the mast. It's also but resistance, absolutely. So the result is the same. The exposure for your body um, being maybe three meters away from your transmitter and inside the room for the mobile phone for the cordless DECT phone um, is probably even much higher than the exposure from a base station that's from that, that, that's a few hundred yards away. Another point that needs to be made about these decked phones, if anybody still is uh, using one, the cordless phone around the house, um, is that, and, and indeed in the context of mobile phones, as we've talked about, it, it's not to lose the landline, hang on to your landline, but use it as a corded device um, uh, in, in the interests of your own um, longevity and health. It really is essential. I know a lot of companies these days say to their staff, well, we're just going to hand you a mobile phone. Obviously, it's more convenient. But um, wherever you see this drift away from the landline connection towards more mobileness, um, it's in our own health interests to resist that that tide. That's not inevitable. And, uh, you know, if we can all participate in the conversation and use our consumer power. We must resist that drift in to just using this stuff just because it's easier, just because it's more convenient. We have to remain conscious of the um, negative impacts. Baby monitors, yes, crazy, yes. crazy idea to have something monitoring your baby uh, under the pretext, of course, that you care about your baby and you're looking after them. And to then find that this uh, little babysitter sitting next to your child is actually harming them. And in the case of young females, it's affecting the fertility of, of even their children, you know, because uh, young girls are born with all their eggs in the ovaries and they are susceptible to this free radical damage, DNA damage. And it's tragic to think that, that people would use a baby monitor in good faith, you know, trying to, to look after their children, wouldn't you say, Mark? We don't even know how this works and when the effects uh, set in, because it, it could be the second, the third generation after that, because there have been um, very interesting tests in animals um, showing, okay, they, they have <laughs> faster generations of course then you can see what happens with rats or something um, and then after three generations all of a sudden some some damage becomes apparent that that you usually wouldn't know where it comes from if it's in humans and it takes 30 years or something to to just become obvious so yes the um, effects of baby monitors are exactly the same because exactly the same technology is at work here like wireless communications with pulse microwave um, frequencies so, yes, it is like giving your baby in, in the first days of, of their life a um, cell phone. So would you do that? I mean, even even the manufacturers of modern day cell phones, they say, be careful with children. 
do not even give them to children. Yes, they say that, but everyone is doing it anyway. So baby monitors really need to be wired versions, otherwise you're harming your child under the guise of looking after your child. You could even, of course, consider um, things like carrying your infant with you in arms all the time in a sling, such as, uh, according to the continuum concept, another subject, but um, yes. something covered elsewhere on the website, lawforrebel.com. Unless, of course, the mother happens to be a cell phone addict, then she carries not only the baby, but also the cell phone. And I mean, this this is not even so far-fetched. This happens all the time. You can even see it when you walk through the park. Smart meters are the other thing that has crept into the home, which is rather like that, so, you know, metaphorical cell phone tower in the corner of the room or under the stairs. The smart meter um, or everyone's energy company wants you to have one fitted. It's obviously a bonus and it's convenient for them. It's it's bad for your health, accelerated aging, all of these things once again. So there, there's a lot of pressure to, to have them installed. It's really yes. important to resist that. <laughs> right now in the UK, it's all over the post offices. You are always bombarded with why smart meters are good, why they are convenient. Oh, convenient again. Uh, I heard that before somewhere today. Um, and uh, that's why they are pressuring people um, to, to just get them installed. Um, in fact, there's something totally different behind this because they want to have the control. They want to be able and turn things on and off. They want to be able to do whatever they want to do. They don't tell you. But that's the real motivation behind the push for smart meters. And um, as far as we're concerned here, it is um, at least in your interest to not do it for health reasons. Absolutely. And uh, of course, smart meters are there to talk to all these smart goods that we alluded to come creeping into the home. Um, you know, so the technology is going. But it's a really good idea to, to insist that a friend of mine had a, a smart meter fitted um, a while ago and he re actually reported physical ill effects. Indeed, as many hypersens uh, electrically hypersensitive people are, you know, they're the sort of metaphorical canary in the coal mine uh, flagging up um, these uh, negative health effects for, the, for human populations in general. So these, he was experiencing some um, sensitivity and, and he just demanded that his the, his power company remove it and unfortunately they're, 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 they're going to do exactly that. So it, it, it's pulsing microwave radiation at the occupants of the house basically all, all day and all night at various intervals, um, you know, in accordance with uh, being able to switch on and off these various uh, white goods ultimately. And it's also, by the way, again, a point of affordability because you, the user, you pay for the power the smart meter eats. And that's not so little. If it is doing wireless communications, then this can amount to quite a bit per year. Um, if it's communicating over the wires by dirty electricity, OK, then it's a little bit cheaper because it's not so power incentive, um, uh, not so power intensive. But um, if it's wirelessly, then it, it might it as well be fifty dollars, forty pounds, whatever per year, just for the power company, and they don't even tell you. So get rid of your smart meter and try and resist smart goods. Um, don't don't buy anything if you can that that is prefixed smart. Try to choose un um, Wi-Fi. Um, enabled goods and and often bear in mind that i think almost all tvs these days brand new ones correct me if i'm wrong mark uh, are coming out sort of wi-fi by default so that's something to be aware of um, you might want to look into how to disable that or put potentially to to stave off getting a new telly um you know depending on your values hi hierarchy what's important to you um, and until you know the market provides for people that don't want to to expose themselves to this danger so uh, look, that leads quite well into cars as well, because something that you brought my attention to, Mark, was, was the fact that new cars uh, are increasingly wired, aren't they? They're, 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 whether it be sort of for diagnostic purposes in the, in the, in the maintenance um, garage, um, you know, perhaps you, know, you can take over here, I believe, for road tolls and stuff in Europe. How is, how is Wi-Fi and smartness creeping into vehicles? If they were just wired, it would be nice. But the wiring just runs on board and then it goes to some sort of transmitter antenna or whatever it is and it goes wirelessly to the cellular, net cellular network and and then off to the bmw service point or whatever it is because um, bmw are known for being particularly uh, bad and on the forefront of this development and also um, not respecting any privacy laws and anything they 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 just have all the data already 
to this day they don't use it, but that might change. Sorry to interject, but uh, just for clarification, do you mean that, uh, that uh, the BMW's uh, sort of diagnostics software and stuff when, you, when, you, when you're talking about uh, privacy and information yes, data? absolutely. BMW have the most data in it, and they are also um, mined for, for quality purposes mostly. But um, every now and then, even, even um, BMW owners receive calls while on the road, which is probably not even legal again if they don't have a properly installed cell phone they receive a call from their friendly bmw salesperson and and tell them yes your service is overdue um and by the way the next service point would be just five kilometers from where you are how the hell do you know where i am was the question of the person i know and um they immediately dropped the thing and <laughs> eventually they dropped the BMW altogether for another make um, because they didn't like it. Okay, good, as long as you can choose. But in a few years, every car, every car will have it. And then you don't have the choice. So, so basically looking at cars evolving into sort of having sort of trackers installed for, for, for road to, road to tra um, transponder measuring for, for these so-called emergency call features. So it's for your, for your benefit, of course, it's going to be sold for, for our benefit. So it, it seems like that's the way we're going, isn't it, Mark, with, with cars just, just becoming increasingly monitored, I suppose it is, isn't it? That's exactly, that's exactly the, the way and, and exactly the... Um, trend it's, it's running in or the direction it's running in what about electric cars what about um you know everyone thinks it's green to have an electric car or a hybrid car we know that to be in proximity of these of these electrical fields um you know at the moment we're only we have only really been talking about the pulse microwave kind um but there are of course the electrical fields associated with being in an electric car now what are the health implications of that to me it it, it sounds like that's going to be worse for me than my good old internal combustion engine absolutely it is um, so on top of all the communications problems and uh, communications um, data transmitters and wireless and cellular communications going on in modern cars for the monitoring and, and servicing um, side you then would also have the um, powering of the car and and, and the uh, entire drive chain which is then um, emitting tremendous amounts of um, magnetic fields and electric fields um, because of the nature of an electric engine um, yeah. of, of an electric engine or it's going to involve car. evolve coils isn't it it's going to involve rotating coils somehow an electric yes. engine and every time it does so every time you have something that involves rotating rotating coils um, the um, electrical fields are particularly high you can start um, seeing this on a fan on a on a in the kitchen, maybe on a vacuum cleaner, all this stuff, hair dryers, uh, they are terrible when it comes to electrical fields. And the same, of course, applies because it's physics to electrical cars. So it's it's not not healthy for the user and not green in this way. But I would also um, question whether or not it is green. I would question whether it is green um, in an overall environmental um you because electricity has to be generated somewhere and i heard it's sometimes nuclear and i heard this can be dangerous and i also heard there is um a power net or a power grid in between and you have to um th there's a certain resistance and a certain loss um transmitting this power and um if you're doing it on a large scale um i, I think it's up to 50 percent that's getting lost in transmission so I, I'm not sure if this talk and this constant um, agenda of, of going electric um, is any good. Let's have a look at uh, security systems. Um, this is something that I hadn't uh, considered until you mentioned it to me the other day, that, that the fact that there are pulsed microwave technologies being used in various security systems. Tell us a bit about that. I'm not sure if it's it's always pulsed microwaves. Um, maybe, okay, it depends on the kind of um, security systems. Maybe airport scanners and, and, and stuff like that, they may do it. And again, um, nobody tells us what's inside. But what about your we burglar alarm? Would, would the burglar alarm just have what sort of what sort of uh, technology are we talking about there on a, on a theft alarm that you, you, on, on someone's house, for example? It's it's usually infrared, I believe. That's pretty harmless. But there's also, I suppose, more more potentially harmful is the is those uh, anti theft scanners in in various shops and supermarkets. Those things that you see, I think they're they're rather like sort of glass or perspex plastic panels, and they've got a huge coil of of, of wire through them. 
meaning yes, meaning that there's an immense uh, magnetic field you walk through, only for a split second, of course, but um, not always. <laughs> I, I said always that that was wrong. Um, usually for a split second, but um, these things they they happen to be located at the checkout. Often you just slow down you stand there maybe you you stand and talk to someone um i've i've seen people just inside the scanner for for minutes talking to someone else yeah, and and be careful that your children do not play between them because they usually run around yourself when when you're at the checkout and and they're bored and they stand between these scanners just tell them to go through and play outside. You mentioned to me before as well, early warning systems are like around uh, New York City and stuff after 9-11, these sorts of things involved uh, involved various electromagnetic fields, uh, as well as, of, of course, uh, you know, all the, 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 uh, the airport scanners and things that, that you've mentioned. So so that would have an impact um, on, on you know, our choice of where to be. We have to, we have to as we gain all this knowledge and, and, and sensibly avail ourselves to the, to the facts of, 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 of what's harmful Harmful to us, we have to factor that into our overall choice, our overall lifestyle choices. Which ultimately is, well, where am I going to be? You know, am I going to sit over here next to this device, or am I going to move away from it? And that does uh, sometimes involve the bigger decision of, well, where shall I live? Where am I going to buy my house? You know, next to the radio, mobile radio phone mast not really a good idea you know choosing to live next to an airport or near to an airport or near to an air area of high intensity um, aerial commercial aviation activity uh, does have a health cost because all of those aircraft um, not only the radar that uh, that shoots from the ground um, but their secondary surveillance radar and their means of speaking to each other effectively these aircraft are all admitting um, pulsed um, uh, if not microwaves pulsed um, uh, radiation technologies including the, the the radar altimeter in fact every airplane that flies over is, is firing a signal to the ground and measuring its return time in order to calculate its radar altitude um, below a certain um, certain uh, altitude that is below 2,500 feet. So if you're close to, to, to on the approach of, of an airport, you know these yes. are all additional things to be aware of. Um, so so and as, as you mentioned, they spill into our lifestyle choices of where to be. So let's move on to our second category now of remediation devices, and and let's t talk a little bit about some of the things uh, that you can buy to 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 help um, mitigate your exposure, basically. And, and the first one that springs to me, although I haven't got it right here at the moment, is my Faraday bag for keeping my mobile phone in. So, um, they cost about um, you know fifteen dollars or so on uh, on Amazon. Um, a useful thing you know you know that your your device is completely not emitting anything if it's in that faraday bag and and these these sorts of things that even extends to sleeping bags you can sleep in a faraday bag uh, to to protect yourself at night so these these things are very very useful to know there, there is a range of products available and they're usually based all on the same methods and techniques um, which is um, having some silver um, lining inside or some some particles that uh, um, that align and and um, build up a little kind of mesh network or something like that and then they are um, grounded somewhere to the mains outlet so you, you basically mean that things like those faraday sleeping nets you can get those faraday sleeping nets can't you that that, that have silver thread um, basically, the Faraday cage um, or the the, the uh, electromagnetic field and pulse microwave radiation blocking effect, the Faraday effect is achieved through this mesh of. of... Yes, they're they're among them, but but it goes even further. There's there's even building materials and building biologists. They have a whole um, range of tools available to uh, remediate all sorts of um, exposure you can have after all these, um, after we mentioned all these sources of um, wireless uh, communications and radiation and radar and whatever. So um, you, you also have real building materials like mats you can include in the walls or um, you have special paints with um, these um, yeah, silver particles in it. And, and then you have only um, some, some corners you have to ground um, after everything is applied. Um, I've also seen for the first time someone um, remediating their roof. This is something I have thought about myself already. And I um, thought of chicken wire or of, of several layers of chicken wire um, put together in order to reduce the size of the um, net. 
And um, actually, there are even smaller ones available. They look like um, traction mats for, for a car or something like that, or even smaller with, with one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter um, networks, uh, net, net in it. And they are just um, covered under the roof tiles or something. And um, they can be applied um, retrospectively to a building even. You, you can do it afterwards. So if you just want to redo, re redo your roof, um, then you can apply these mats. And again, you have to ground them properly um, after they are applied. And, and then you get a very nice um, shielding that takes away up to 90, 95, maybe even 99% of, of the um, common frequencies that are flying around outside these days. Yeah, and um, also, it's, of course, um, it's worth mentioning that you can get these, uh, you can you can earth your, your computer or your laptop by simply um, connecting uh, in through the USB socket direct to, to an earth um, socket. That's a device that I got recently, which I noticed collapsed the electrical field around my uh, MacBook Pro here, it collapsed it from about a meter and a half out down to a matter of inches. So so it's very important to, to earthing is very important in, in dealing with these electrical fields. Yes, absolutely. These are the smaller steps you can st you can take, but also the faster ones because they are much easier, and and start at the very um, places at the emitting places and the units you you may use, and particularly like notebook computers, which you are touching most of the time because <laughs> that's the entire purpose of the computer, um, and and when it's a notebook, then everything is integrated, and even the keyboard is then probably with a very high electrical field. If you have it separately, like 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 this one, where you just have the keyboard um, separately, then there's a lot less of an electric field emitted, but there may still be um, some because it's traveling over the wire, of course. That that is a wired keyboard, is it, Mark? <laughs> it's not a Wi-Fi one, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a wired one, yes. Um, but uh, because because that's another thing, isn't it, to be aware of, isn't it? With the, the you know people have their their desktop and their screen, they might have a wireless um, um, device as a key, you know, remote keyboard. So another thing to be aware of. Yes, absolutely. That's that's the second source then again. But but then you would have Bluetooth and and these um, a little um, these little lower um, radiation sources all around again, and, and that falls into the third category we mentioned earlier. So uh, as well as um, um, all these sort of Faraday uh, things like sleeping bags and nets, there's of course uh, all the EMF resistant clothing, beanies, vests and underwear and all that sort of stuff that are coming on the market. And, and as these things are emerging, these products, obviously we can't claim to be comprehensive. It's uh, people's ingenuity. More things are coming on the mar market all the time. But it's a really good idea to be aware of this because these sorts of things can help protect us. And, and another um, thing that comes under remediation devices is things like... Um, uh, um, isolating your sleeping area from electrical fields because e even if you just have a ring main that isn't in a conduit pipe uh, around the wall and your bed is parked next to it or you're sleeping next to it, um, the the unshielded electrical cable, um, if, if, unless it's isolated, will be humming with 50 hertz or 60 hertz and that electrical field um, is detrimental while we sleep as well. So things like isolation switches, in order to isolate the, the um, electricity from at least away from your bed area, if not your entire bedroom, um, is a really good idea to sleep in an EMF free zone, not only with your mobile phone switched off and your Wi-Fi switched off and all of these things, um, kill all those electrical fields and then maybe even use an electrical grounding sheet to ground your body to the earth electrically and make use of those free um, uh, electrons when your body's in that rejuvenative phase at night. Really important to not be exposed to the extra um, reactive oxygen species and, and DNA damage going on in your cells from the electrical fields but to actually avail yourself to the free electrons via your earthing sheet that you may elect to sleep on so that's worth bearing in mind as well these sorts of remediation devices it only makes uh, sense though after you did all the other things um, of getting rid of the sources of the electromagnetic fields um, because if you don't and only use a grounded sheet, for example, then you would even increase the flow of electricity through your body because then everything of these um, distortions comes in and, and your body um, is um, 
a little bit like an antenna and then you just um, collect it all around and then you um, get rid of it via the sheet and, and you have an increased electrical flow. So do the remediation and the switching off and the avoidance and everything first and, and then get also the sheet you mentioned and then um, you have probably the best setup you can have. That, that, that is a really good point. Thank you for making that. Um, and just to hammer it home, I'm, I'm even going to repeat it, I think. Before you use a grounding sheet or any grounding device, it's really important to have eliminated all the electrical fields first. That is, that is so, yeah, so important. The risk or the danger is always that people might see the um, grounding sheet as a silver bullet and say, OK, that's, that's very easy. I can do that. And then I can turn my mobile phone on. No. You can't. That's that's absolutely the the point you have to remember, and that's good that you pointed it out again. This that reminds me, Mark, of another really important point. And uh, you know, we're talking here about remediation devices. We're talking about things that can help protect us or avoid exposure. And one thing I think is very important to be able, people to be aware of is things that that are claiming to harmonize or use with crystals or something you know devices with a load of uh, pretty stones in it that's sort of plugged in somewhere that really isn't going to cut it ladies and gentlemen i th these things i believe um are, are are a scam to the extent that um i've uh, measured some of them and played around with them and, and and found it very difficult to detect any um uh, you know effect so I, I i'm i'm very very skeptical about those kinds of devices i believe they might be um useful if there are very very low levels residual levels of um emfs coming in and maybe they can harmonize that when when you can measure a field one side of a faraday fabric and and not the other side you know you, you can see that it's actually happening in reality can't you and you're not you're just on a wish and a prayer so let's move into remediation techniques uh, these are things that we can actually do um, you know, making various changes. And we've, we've already talked about, for example, um, wiring our home uh, to, to get rid of the Wi-Fi. So, so this category is exploring a little bit more, more of that. And, and I think it's important to start with um, making sure that your home or your workplace or whatever space you're, you're interested in is, is properly earthed. Yes, the earthing um, means that, that all the devices you use in your house um, are working properly and are by design um, reducing the electrical fields they, they produce two meters around. Yeah, I must admit when I when I started looking at this and I contemplated electric toothbrushes and electric razors, I, I thought, well, the amount of time I'm exposed to is so tiny, but I've come now to think, do you know what? I don't want to put any buzzing motor <laughs> near my near, near my body at all. And, and, and it's it's no aggro to to, you know, to live without these particular convenience devices. Um, another thing we can do is is, is shielding um, wire in the, in our homes and buildings um, in conduit. This is a good way of of making sure that that there's no electrical field coming from the actual wiring within the walls and within the floors and ceilings for for powering lights. That's that's something that's worth bearing in mind if you're if you're buying a new property or if you're building one. Um, that's a way that you can reduce the EMF exposure for the occupants. You can also yes. um, look into shielding your room uh, with earthed aluminium foil and things and even chicken wire. If you live in a block of flats or some, for example, you've got Wi-Fi above and below you. Um, th there are these techniques. It might seem extreme, but if you're electrically hypersensitive, this would be absolutely essential. So I gather if you use aluminium foil, that does have to be earthed. Um, and again, yes, um, just like the paint we mentioned earlier, with the um, silver, silver particles in it, um, they have to be earthed too. It's it's probably the same effect. I'm probably doesn't matter which one you use, um, unless we have fifth generation around and these um, uh, wavelengths become much shorter, because the um, fifth generation will aggravate things in as far as the um, wavelength is concerned um, by by going down into the millimeter length. We are currently at around 13 to 9 centimeters when it comes to cellular communications. Um, that is in the 900 to 2 gigahertz, 900 megahertz to 2 gigahertz uh, bands. And then these wireless devices, Wi Fi, and homes, they go up to 5 gigahertz already. So that is um, around. 
three centimeters maybe or or six centimeters i'm I'm not quite sure there are tables available where you can look it up but the fifth generation if they really go and use the very high frequency bands um above 22 gigahertz which is um something they could do then um you are talking about wavelengths from five millimeters down to maybe one millimeter and then you need a pretty good shielding and um, maybe aluminum foil instead of just uh, some some sort of net which isn't um, sufficient anymore then okay well that, that's that's good to know so i mean if you're sort of you know even setting up a garden shed at the end of your garden or something to have an emf free zone you could create your own faraday cage to to yeah. spend time in by uh, you know judicious use of various gauges of chicken wire um do the research as you s suggested there mark and and even use aluminium foil and you could create an emf free zone for yourself these are things that yeah. just could be worth thinking about supplementing with magnesium um, can have a very beneficial effect in that uh, the non-thermal effects is just a very brief reminder it's the non-thermal effects of EMFs that damage us and the cause is that they trigger these voltage gated calcium channels um, in our, all the cells of our body or most of the cells of our body um, to open and calcium of course um, a very uh, important signaling molecule in the human body and and its entrance uh, into cells is something that is normally regulated but the electromagnetic fields mess with this and they tend to um, override the 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 should we say the the automatic systems and open these voltage gated calcium channels allowing calcium to flood in if you're supplementing with magnesium and you have more uh, magnesium, uh, it serves as a calcium channel blocker effectively. It, 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 it uh, dampens, if you like, or blocks the, the, the tendency for these calcium channels to open. So if you're in a, an area of intense um, EMF, that could be something that's worth considering. It's worth uh, considering supplementing with magnesium for a whole load of other reasons because most of us are very much deficient in magnesium but that's something that I think is quite interesting that uh, you might want to bear in mind there's another um, another interesting technique you can use which is doing an, an exercise created by Dr Zach Bush called the nitrogen oxide dump which I'll put a link to uh, below um, and this exercise um, if performed as he uh, states it helps uh, release cellular nitric oxide nitric oxide being bad news when it builds up inside the cell as a result of uh, the voltage gated calcium channel activity and a, a snowball or should I say a domino effect of events that produces this uh, nitric oxide within the cell um, the, the the exercise routine the nitric oxide dump releases that from the cell where it's harmful and a problem and gets it into the bloodstream where it's a bonus so this is really well worth doing you can do this exercise three times a day it takes a matter of minutes two or three minutes so it's a good way of instantly met mitigating those the effects by releasing the nitric oxide so it's worth bearing in mind Fundamentally, it, it comes down to being aware, doesn't it? Um, bearing in mind the dangers of our living environment. I mean, what human being wanting to live a successful, healthy life would would want to shut down their awareness of potential dangers? You know, if there's a if a if a rapist moves into the area or a child molester, we want to be aware of these things. And similarly, we want to be aware of of all physical dangers. And one of them. Um, unfortunately, is the uh, effect of these modern convenience devices in the form of uh, EMFs. It doesn't mean to say that we have to reject technology. I'm very pro-technology. But it does mean that when we factor these the, this information um, into, into uh, the, the sum of our knowledge, it gives us a, a broad context in which to make informed choices and, and, and therefore thrive and have children and have grandchildren you know that aren't that that's not going to be scuppered by infertility so it's really about becoming more conscious isn't it and weighing up the convenience against health and well-being and and uh, as we've said yes it is and the danger i believe is that these things are invisible or um, they are not not detectable by any of our senses you cannot see them you cannot smell them you cannot taste them but still you have to some way know they are there and once you start understanding that they are there that um, wireless radiation that electromagnetic fields that electric fields that magnetic fields all these um, sorts of pollutants you cannot detect with your body um, that they still exist and that, they, that they may affect you then you can start um, remediating against them and if you need a 
device or a meter to to make them visible then for god's sake take a meter and and make them visible they make very nasty sounds it's 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 not pleasant to listen to and once you hear it you become more and more aware of of where the um, sources of of um, all these fields are i think it's very important to be uh, to proactively manage um, our lifestyle very deliberately rather than sort of drift along with the crowd because that's when we can we can end ending up adopting habits of use patterns of use that are harmful um, so you know it, it comes down to sort of a, being a bit of an individual I suppose and 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 uh, you know you know daring to 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 live differently if you like and with things like you know sometimes when I have a lot of visitors in my space and everyone's got their phones on um, you know I, I've even asked people to to please switch their their phones into airplane mode uh, for for the for the duration that we're all together. Just you know, rather like rather like smoking has become a very antisocial thing to do. You know, passive smoking. The idea of passive uh, EMF exposure is 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 huge. I think so. So these are all things to bear in mind, really. Uh, I think one of the biggest one biggest lifestyle choices comes down to where we live do you choose to live in a rural place do you live in a city place you know in an, on an airport approach path perhaps um you know near a mobile mast or, or one of these uh, police tetra masts i don't even know what frequencies they use but that can't be good news no. um yeah choosing yeah. choosing where we where we work um whether we work at home or commute all of these uh, bigger lifestyle choices um, should rightly be affected by this issue of of our health and EMF exposure, as well as all the other considerations. Yes. Homeschooling—that's another one, Mark, isn't it? I mean, in the light of schools being packed with Wi-Fi. Oh yes, indeed it is. Um, they are packed with Wi-Fi on the inside. The classroom is um, totally filled with it. Twenty devices, twenty-five devices, thirty devices, depending on class size, um, all beaming across the room um, on one hand and on the other hand the usual cell tower outside because the, sh the school likes some additional funding which they can get or at least um, the district likes it or, or whoever runs the school and and they are renting out these sites in order to to have cell towers on them um, there are growing numbers of of pressure groups, parent pressure groups, um, pressuring schools to remove these things. There are also um, pressure groups to remove uh, the devices from the classroom again, because uh, ta tablets from, from the classroom again, yes, because it's it's also, <laughs> you, you can also do it hardwired, why not? You can even use the tablet, by the way, hardwired. There are adapters around. I'm, I'm pretty sure in no school um, is anybody, they use it. But um, anyway, um, you can mitigate this as well, yes. Yeah, that's absolutely a good point. Uh, the school is a very uh, EMF um, intense area and it's, uh, you know, uh, that reason alone, um, although there are lots of others to maybe consider homeschooling. <laughs> But yeah, there are, there are other lifestyle choices, like, for example, you know, not emailing on your smart mobile phone. Um, if, if, you, if you've got a, a laptop or a desktop or something at home, maybe batch process your, your emailing, um, you know, in the morning or the evening, once a day or, or, or whatever, instead of um, emailing on the go with your smartphone. That's a way that you can achieve the same thing without the harmful exposure. Also, we can... Uh, choose to watch videos at home on our big screen you know everybody tv screens have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger over decades and and now everybody seems fascinated to watch little uh, you know <laughs> films on our mobile phones while, we, while we're waiting at bus stops and things like that or, or on trains so so maybe reserve watching videos to the big screen and and again switch that mobile phone off these are just thoughts and things ideas that, that that can be implemented to reduce our our exposure absolutely and it's on, on both counts it's a matter of quality again you write much better emails if you do it with a keyboard and do it at home than on the go or on the bus stop at the bus stop and um on the other hand um your video viewing experience is much better on a larger screen than it is on a on a small display that was originally intended for for just um, switching between music lists on a on an iPod it's important to sort of distance ourselves as well isn't it mark from the sort of insane culture of permanent connection that the idea that you've got to keep checking facebook every few minutes or checking your messages or your emails 
um, because you can't bear to be sitting alone with your own company for a while. You know, these these are all sort of further sort of sad indications of, 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 of our culture. And, and it's important, even as we seek, uh, you know, to uh, minimize our danger to these EMFs, it's really important to sort of distance ourselves to some extent from this culture of permanent connectivity it's perfectly okay to batch process in fact it's more efficient to batch process one's emails and one's communications um, one or two times a day all together so so again this it's just shunning this culture of permanent connectivity another thing we can do of course is to avoid hanging out in coffee shops and places where we know that Wi-Fi and EMF exposure is going to be great. Uh, walking down the street in London a few months ago, you know, you can't, not only can I see all these towers all over the building tops, but almost everyone in the in the busy tourist areas of London is is looking at their phone. Not only are they carrying it, but most of them are looking at it. So it's a very very electro smog intense place and just choosing how much we want to frequent these areas you know it's okay to do it maybe uh, occasionally or for short periods of time but do we want to immerse ourselves in that in that um, environment all the time maybe not so there you have it really the, the, the four main categories as we've indicated are avoidance uh, remediation devices remediation techniques and overall lifestyle choices and really ultimately it all comes down to uh, a lifestyle choice in, in questioning this connectivity so I really hope that you've got some benefit from um, Mark and I uh, you know putting our heads together and trying to come up with as comprehensive a possible as possible a list so uh, do do add in the comments below any other um, ideas or suggestions that would be fantastic to add to this and uh, I may put a link below to a summary of these ideas to make it easier if anybody wants to, to download that. Mark thank you so much for, for joining in this discussion and I hope you'll join me again. It was great to be here again. And uh, thank you all for listening and uh, check the website out lawfulrebel.com and join us again on Lawful Rebel TV for more information to help you thrive. Lawful Rebel Comprehensive calls. Lawful Rebel. Active minds open doors. Lawful Rebel. You can see the signs. Yeah. If you read.